Okay, folks, here we are um, with the motor. We're going to be using what I originally purchased with my old Avastar is a, actually it's the original, and this one too, is the original, made in Italy, look right there, Super Tiger 45. Um, a lot of people, well, why are you using Super Tiger over OS or any of the other brand of engines? Um, not that OS is a bad engine, they're actually a really good engine. However, it just always seemed to me that Super Tiger offered more power for the money. Um, from what I've experienced, this Super Tiger 45 will outfly an OS 45. They're just that much more powerful. And uh, once you get them tuned, the startability is amazing. I've always hand propped. I mean, just, just a quick flick of the spinner and the motor has always started for me once you get them tuned. And they just seem to run forever if you take care of them. And I mean forever. Uh, the Avastar that I used for training purposes, the Super Tiger 45 on it, which is made in Italy engine, it has been running strong now for 20 years. And it's still going. And I'm going to continue using it until it just rattles apart. But uh, this is actually one that uh, would have been purchased back in my day of beginning in RC. And well, let's just take a look at what we have here. We'll open the box. And they're always packaged everything really well. Um, here's your warranty. Um, I'm sure that's not any good anymore because of how old it is. And I, uh, I think uh, Super Tiger has uh, kind of gone away with wind now due to the tanking hobby market, which really stinks. Um, this is just a sales flyer that they shipped out with everything. It advertises all the different motors that uh, they manufactured at the time in Italy. Um, the glow plugs you could get, mufflers, uh, tune pipes, all that wonderful stuff that you could get back in the day, all the dimensions of everything. I'm gonna take this and actually laminate it and hang it up. That's actually really, really neat. Fortunately, I found this. And then the all important instruction manual. Follow this. Do what this says exactly, and I promise you, you won't have any problem. It's what I did way back, and that had proved to me to be the perfect motor in any situation. So really, any 40 size airplane, I'm gonna fly a Super Tiger 45 on it, just for the simple fact I know there's gonna be enough power. Um, our home runway is grass, and it's always been proven to have enough power in these Avastars that I fly. Like right now, I'm training with a Gen 3. And uh, that thing, it'll roll probably 30 foot, and then I can just go vertical with it. I mean, it'll climb like a homesick angel with this thing. So I've always used it. So it's a very informative instruction manual. It's an Italian French. Uh, oh, and the stickers. Ha, the old vintage stickers. That's pretty cool. Um, it actually comes in four different languages, Italian, English, French, and Dutch. So, I mean, wherever you're at, follow those directions. And I promise this motor will uh, be awesome. It, it won't ever do you wrong. And they put the cardboard in there to protect against the oil. I was extremely lucky to find this motor, especially for the price that I did. This motor's brand new. Never been run, and you can tell, I don't know if the lighting will allow it, but if you look, you can kind of see the piston wiggle up and down there. If that motor has been run, I'll run this piston up right there. That section of the piston would be black from scavenging exhaust. Okay, there'd be a little bit of carbon buildup. It might be even kind of brown, but this engine has never been run. And if you want to go to the extreme, you can pop the head bolts out and look at the top of the piston, but I can tell there's a little bit of tarnish on the crankshaft which really isn't gonna hurt much of anything. It's just from setting around is all it is. But after I get some fuel run through it, it'll be fine. I may try to polish it with a Q-tip later, who knows? But that's the motor, that thing has never been run. And you can always tell, look at the side of the crankcase, made in Italy by Super Tiger. That's when you know you have the real deal. Um, oh man, a number of years ago, they actually retooled in Japan or China or, or somewhere. They're still a good motor, but I started with Made in Italy, and if I can find one that's made in Italy, I do what I can to get a hold of it. Now, you're probably wondering, why is it so much more powerful than the OS? 
Now, oh, yeah, you gotta be careful because in the bag that the carburetor comes in, it comes with the bolts that holds the exhaust on. You gotta have that. These things are tuned to that muffler. So, you wanna hang on to those. Now, this carburetor, if you look, oh wow, it's all throttle arm hadn't even been tightened down. That's cool. But the throat of the carburetor is so much bigger than one on an OS. If I had an OS carb here from a 45, I'd show you. It goes through a lot more fuel. Yes, it does. But power costs, you know, what, what can I say? There's the carburetor and, of course, the muffler. Now, Super Tiger did the best they could to silence these things. Yes, it's louder than an OS. It don't bother us any at all because there's no noise restrictions where we're at. Because where we fly, we're actually zoned for agriculture. So there's tractors out there buzzing around all the time. And uh, we'll be using that. So our next step here after the epoxy cures on the tail feathers of the Avastar, we're going to fit our motor crankcase to our Avastar. Because if I remember correctly, it wasn't an exact fit. So we'll have to do a little bit of carving and some more epoxy work before we actually set the motor. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to our next episode of Big Sky Hobby Corner. Um, the one I've got uploading right now is the episode where we installed the landing gear on um, our Generation 1 Avastar 40. Um, next, we're gonna mount um, the Super Tiger 40. Uh, you know, what was what's funny is, I forget how simple some things were back then. Um, I was thinking measurements from the firewall where the back plate of the prop needs to be and all this good stuff, which is commonly stated in uh, building and, and kits. Um, you'll have a thrust angle to set. You'll have a distance from the firewall to the back plate of your spinner um, for clearance purposes. And This one, I forgot, it's just make sure your prop clears the front of the airplane and bolt it down. Flies that good. So that's what we're going to do. So um, I'm going to drink some coffee and we'll get started. Okay, on our next part here where we're going to install the motor, first thing we need to do is install the push rod and the push rod tube. Now here we have the fuel hatch. This is actually the one Amistar that did this, and I wish they did this on all of them is they have a fuel tank hatch that's removable. It gives you access to where the fuel tank and everything is going to go on all of our push rods. So first thing, there's an eighth inch hole up top in the firewall on our throttle side. We may have to drill that out because we covered everything in epoxy. And, yep. So, we're going to get a handy dandy drill bit and drill that out. This is what I need, an extended drill bit here. It's not exactly square. But we're going to glue it into place anyway. Let's see if we can get that bad boy through there. Not yet. Okay. I had to move the airplane, hold it in a vertical position so I could drill that out properly. Now, we're going to slide that through our firewall. And then, let's see here. On the inside of that front bulkhead, so we want to feed that. Actually, that's not a notch, that's for her. We want to feed that right alongside there to come back to our servo tray, which is going to be right here. So we're just going to Shove her on back there a little bit, and we'll come back up front here.
Okay. We're going to come back up front here. and we'll, They say the instructions have about a half inch or so. I always try to keep it as minimum as possible. And then what we'll do, we'll get our medium CA and uh, glue it into place. First, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to sand our push rod. In the same way as we did for our landing gear, we're just going to spin it around in some sandpaper there. And what that does, that just roughs it up to give that glue something to grab onto. Nice, secure. Yep. It's a nice, secure fit. I'll slide that on back. And, I mean, I always just kind of eyeball it. Um, you, the, the important thing is you just don't want your throttle linkage to actually hit anything. Because what we'll do, we'll have a, a Z-bend on this particular airplane. We'll have a Z-bend that'll connect to the throttle arm. And uh, some of the other airplanes will actually have a clevis. And, you know, you're a little longer. And you don't want your clevis to bottom out on the tube, not giving you full motion, range of motion that the servo is willing to give it. And uh, that can cause some problems. Overcomable, but uh, still give you some problems. We're going to let that kind of dry a little bit. Okay, give her a squirt of kicker. I don't know what that stuff is actually made out of, but it works. It works well. Check that. Make sure that's dry. And then the other control rod which is just like the one it's a 17 and three quarter just like the one that uh, we use for the nose gear use the old z-bend pliers and then whoop just like that Have a nice z-bend like so you can trim that little bit of excess off and sometimes when you bend them if you look it's not exactly straight, no big deal. You can just grab the pliers and straighten it out. What I do, see, you can hold it in your pliers and see how this is at an angle. Just give it a little bit of a rotation. Now it's spring still, so I'd want to try to go back. So you just kind of keep going until you get it straight. Now, one thing I am going to do. If I can get you back here um, before I insert the push rod and mount the motor because we're going to have stuff in the way. See how far back our, our tube extends? Well, our servo arm is actually going to be right about here. So we're way longer than what we need. So I'm actually going to cut that. I'm going to cut it right about here. Okay. That, because what that'll do, that'll allow plenty of clearance. Because what I'm going to do, if I have some, I'm going to use what's called a servo saver on this one. And, and our throttle and our nose gear. Uh, the reason why is in the, event, in the event of a crash and we wind up ripping the firewall out, it'll actually allow the rods to come out of the servo arm without actually stripping out the servo so okay and then we just insert our push rod man I wish I miss my steady hands Put in there and then yes our, our uh, control rod is going to be way long too but we can trim that later when we get to our servo installation 
All right, now we have that in, we can actually move forward to mounting our motor. Let's see. Now, typically when you do a build, the Sarah motor doesn't necessarily seat all the way, which is fine. We're going to trim some of that off to make it fit a little better. They'll have a distance from the firewall to your prop washer or to the, your back plate of your drive washer to, to maintain. And then they'll also have what's called a thrust angle, which is what angle your motor sets at. It's more prevalent in bigger airplanes. So the bigger the airplane, the more prevalent that's going to be. This airplane, not so much. Um, what you can do, there's two ways you can do this. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to use a ruler to set the distance. All you got to do at this point is just make sure your drive washer clears the front of your airplane. So just use line of sight down and make sure you clear the cheeks. So that's going to have to come forward just a little bit, about like so. All right, now this airplane is inherently tail heavy because all the brass in the back end. So being forward isn't necessarily going to hurt. So before we move on to our next step, I know I'm going to have to open our motor rails up just a little bit. Not much. I could actually probably force that down in there, but I'm not going to. Because what's going to happen is, um, if we don't have any kind of clearance on that, all the vibration that the motor produces is going to go down our motor rails through the rest of the airplane and shake it apart. So I'm just going to open that up just a little bit so it's not so tight on the crankcase. Okay, here we are. I've got uh, my motor rails <clears throat> trimmed out just a little bit and didn't take much. I just used a file. Now I reset the motor and in making sure we're in the right spot, make sure we're square to the airplane or parallel. And then our drive washer is actually going to clear the cheeks of the fuselage. So that is good. Now we've got to mark the holes for where we're going to drill our screw holes for the motor. Now this is really important. Um, you want to get this right. Now see I'm going to use a hole locator. What this does, this tapered section locates the center of the hole and you use that drill bit to twist in to, uh, to mark the hole. You're not going to use it to actually drill the hole but just to mark it. So with the drip bit retracted, going to put it in the hole. Not sure if you can see that. And just come straight down. Give her a couple twists to make a mark. A good one. And then we're going to repeat that on the other three. Remember, this is just to mark the location. And then when we get all these marked, we'll uh, remove the motor and come back and drill those out. Just like that. Okay, now here is the fun part. We have our holes drilled. As you can, you can actually see in the camera, I've got them lined up pretty good. This kit does not necessarily come with the screws you need to mount the motor. So what I'm using is some black self-tapping screws that uh, are appropriate for the hole size. And what we're going to do, the hole goes all the way through. We're going to screw this motor down and then on the back side we're going to run some CA down that hole to kind of secure them into place and then I'll come back and probably run a drop around the top of the screw to kind of help hold them there. Sometimes when you got big fingers and hands, a pair of needle nose pliers comes in real handy. I'm going to get each one of these started. And 
and I'm gonna screw them in off camera because I do this a little bit better if the airplane was in my lap. But kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing. Alright, I'm going to tighten him up and we'll be back. Okay, so here we are with our motor mounted and now it's time to install the carburetor and muffler. And I was checking this out before I started the video. Um, sometimes you have to create clearances. In this case, it'll be for the muffler. Um, we're actually hitting the cheek of the airplane, so what we'll do, we'll come back later and trim out like a half moon or so right here for the exhaust stack to clear the cheek of the airplane. We'll go ahead and put our muffler, or our carburetor on. This is our Super Tiger carburetor, big sucker. And you want to make sure that you have your throttle arm in, in the same orientation as the control rod for the throttle. So that'll go in there like that. And one thing that's really important, if you see, we have a black O-ring right here. That's really important that that gets a seal when we tighten this down. So go ahead and slide that in there. Now I've put a little bit of oil on that to kind of ease the uh, installation process. Get it seated down nice and good and make sure we're at 90 degrees with our crank case. Our needle valve clears the cheek so we're good there. And there's a tiny nut, there's like a cam, a pull cam in there that locks the carburetor down. So what I'm going to do, this can be a little tricky, I don't have any sockets small enough for this particular application. So we're going to spin that nut down. I'm using my thumb and my hand to hold that carburetor down tight so that O-ring will do its job and seal. It'll never run right if that doesn't seal. Because what that's doing, that is allowing air to seep into the crankcase and lean out our fuel mixture. And you gotta be careful because that is a brass nut. Super Tiger used a lot of brass in the manufacturing. Maybe that's a part of their success. You can probably save yourself a little bit of a headache here by installing that before you put the motor on. But hey, you know, it's in there. We're going to do it this way. It's just one less thing in the way when you're trying to do your mount. What's bad is I knew better. <laughs> there is a lock washer underneath that nut. Alright. 
And now the cool part. What I'm going to do, this has been loose. They come that way. And then I'm going to get my control rod out here where I can work with it. And then what I always do, I'll slide it to the inside hole. And then I'll just program out the travel. Just like that. And actually, I want that screw to be on top. So we'll flip her around. Like that. And for just the meantime, I'm going to tighten it down. It's not adjusted yet. And you know what, that actually, that's been setting so long. We're gonna put just a little bit of oil on that. This is just WD-40 I have in a CA bottle. We'll, uh, I'm not going to tighten it down because it's not at its final setting, but I am going to snug it up just to kind of check the operation of everything. Now that arm is plastic, so we got her snugged up there, and then I'm just going to reach back here in the fuselage and check the operation. That does need to be tightened down. It is a little sticky because it has been setting. <clears throat> It'll take a, little, <clears throat> take a little bit for that oil to penetrate and do its job. There we go. Just like that. The only thing is, when we're flying, it'll be a servo doing that work. Pretty cool, huh? Now it's time to <coughs> mount our muffler. And uh, I've got to, uh, I've got some things I need to go do today. And uh, we'll be back later uh, this afternoon to finish this install. All right, here we are. I already took the Liberty off the camera to notch the side of the fuselage out for the manifold that we're going to use. Now let's take your screws and insert them through the back side here. That way we pulled our muffler apart to where we just have our manifold. And we just simply put our stack on just like that. It's that simple. And we have lock washers, but you always make sure they're on the screw head side. And then we'll put our nut on. What I'll do, I'll put a drop of uh, CA on that nut. Almost act like a thread locker. Keep vibration from uh, backing those off. that good and tight. I remember this sees a lot of vibration so I mean just outside of stripping them you want to get them real tight. I'd love to have a little socket set for this stuff you know that'd be awesome you know. 
every time I'm at the store, I never think about it. Or when I do think about it, I don't have the money to buy it. You know how that is. Now that's it. All right, then we have our muffler. Let's see that. Looks like that could use a little slick on it. Just a little bit of oil. The three in one works just fine. That's just basically to help the ease of assembly here. Get that slit on there just like that. Now wait, my personal preference, you can set your muffler up just like that, but the problem is your exhaust oil is gonna blow back and get all over your wing and then your tail surfaces, it makes a real mess. So what I like to do is point that down at about 45 degrees. And what happens is your oil and your exhaust will blow back and really, the only thing it'll get will be your landing gear wire, the underside of your fuselage, and of course your stab back in the back there. I mean, it still kind of makes a mess, but it's not as bad. All right, well that's it for our engine assembly, or engine mounting and getting all the hardware on. Um, next, uh, what we'll do, we'll put together our fuel tank. And I kind of want to go over some important points on that. Um, that way you don't have any kind of failure. But yeah, our engine set up. Throttle works. All our exhaust is clearing. And we'll build the fuel tank and then we'll come back and we'll plumb our fuel lines. All right, what do you say we put our fuel tank together? Okay, a couple key things here. Um, this is our fuel tank, of course, and it is what they call a seamed fuel tank. It's not a seamless. So there is a potential, and though it very rarely, rarely happens, uh, there is potential for it to crack. And if it does crack, it's going to be right along the seam. But, uh, you know, these little engines, they don't produce enough pressure to really make that a problem. But you always want to inspect your fuel tank just to make sure it's not coming apart anywhere, especially as old as this one is. It's been around. And uh, this is a 320 cc or a 10 and a half ounce uh, fuel tank. And this will buy you with a Super, for Super Tiger 45, it'll buy you about 15 minutes of uh, flight time. Now here's our hardware package. Um, that's the fuel line that they give you to run inside your fuel tank. Pitch that. Okay, and there's our lines. That uh, actually go in and out of the tank. Our tank stopper. Yeah, they never did uh, poke the holes all the way through, but that's an easy remedy. This is the the front side. Oh, what was that? Oh, some sandpaper. And the back side of our fuel cap. Third line, if we decide to run it, which we're not. This is our screw that holds those two together. And then our clunk weight. This is important, what this does, I'll show you, actually goes on the end of a bit of your fuel line here. And what that does, that goes into your tank. We're gonna cut it off about this far. What that does, no matter the attitude of the airplane, it's always gonna put that line into the fuel. Okay, so you don't ever run out. Or, well, you don't ever run dry. But uh, that's the purpose of that. So first thing we're going to do is actually assemble our stopper. <laughs> when I was young, I always had the hardest time with these things. And you notice there's three holes. As for like a three-line system, if you wanted to run your carburetor pressure and then a fill line separate, you could do so. Um, I've always just run a two-line system because we'll fill off of the carburetor. I'm just going to take my marker here and just start a hole. Because when I mold these, they don't really mold them all the way through. And then sometimes it doesn't hurt. I'm, I'm kind of remembering some of this stuff from a long time ago. Put a little bit of oil in there. That's uh, actually a whole lot of bit of oil. Okay. 
And that just allows ease of penetration just right on through like that. What I'm going to do, we're going to go about halfway on both of our lines. These are our hard lines. That's, uh, this is actually what's going to go through the firewall in the airplane. About like that. Okay. Now, we take our front side. And get that lined up. Slide that on down like so. Then we'll take our back side. You notice there's a nub poking out there. You want that towards the back because that's actually what grabs the threads. And slide that on right there. And then this has to poke through the middle, which is a, this was always the pain in the butt but it's how it works because what this does once this is inserted into the tank it squishes it together and creates a seal which is really important so we'll just get that started is what i'm going to do get that into the plastic let's see where we're at here Yeah, it's it's hard to see but we're poking through there so that's what I was really concerned about I just want to get it started I don't want to squish it just yet because we still have some things to do okay now orientation in our airplane is gonna be like so this is the fuel tank this side will go to the carburetor okay and this side will come off of our muffler for the pressure and the way it works is as the engine runs, that muffler pressurizes up and there's a line that comes off of that that goes to our fuel tank that pressurizes our fuel tank to help feed fuel to the carburetor, okay? So when we're in our tank, we're going to put our clunk line on our carburetor side. That way it's always getting fuel. And now what we need to do on our pressure side, we need to bend that up. You can do it by hand. You can get you some tubing benders if you want but I mean that's about what we want to do okay that way it's towards the top of the tank and we don't we'll also use that as a fuel gauge as well when we fuel our airplane up now our next step is we want to kind of eyeball you don't want so much fuel line in here to where that's going to happen because then it's going to be useless it can't move around what I always do, I'll hold this back about a half inch from the back side of the tank. About like that. And then I'll kind of pitch it right about where our fuel stopper is going to be. So right about there is where we want to cut that. So you can cut that with scissors, razor knife, however. Just about like that. Make sure you don't go all the way through and poke a hole in your tank when you do something like that. And we'll just slide that sucker onto the carburetor side. Get it on there as far as you can. And what, what you can do is just grab below, kind of give it a pinch and squish it on there. Just about like that. Now that's not going to go anywhere. And then we'll feed that sucker in there and get all that started. And then we'll insert it into our tank. Sometimes that can be a bugger too if you don't have any oil. And then we'll just tighten it down. Now another thing you can do here to kind of test your fuel line, your fuel tank, and I highly recommend you do this. I'm going to get some fuel line here. I'm going to cut off a couple sections.
about like that. Okay, just make sure I had some more. Make sure I just didn't destroy what I needed to use in the airplane. We'll slide it on our fuel lines. And what I'm going to do is actually blow pressure in with my mouth on one side and pinch the other side. I don't know if you can hear that. I'll use the microphone here. Now I'm going to release it. So, yeah. So we got a good seal right there. That's, that's really cool. And then you can pull another test and suck on it. And what you can do is just, you know, cap it with your tongue or whatever. This is just a quick bench test just to make sure everything is sealing properly. And we got a good sealing fuel tank right here. Now, this kit came with a foam ring. put around here to insulate that when it's up against the firewall because you notice when we mounted our motor and that one split it's so darn old it split well you know it's all right it happens they don't really have to have it but what that does is this sets up against the firewall that helps uh, isolate vibration or uh, from the fuel line and the reason vibration is uh, can be a bad thing is because nitro in the tank when it's when it starts shaking it it'll foam up almost like a soda okay it, it'll fizz up and then you get a, it'll actually long story short it, it'll lean out your mixture and your tuning won't be right so you want to try to isolate as much leakage and vibration as you can from that and which will pack some foam rubber or uh some foam around the fuel tank as well which is also a handy thing that comes inside the motor boxes is foam and you can use paper towels anything like that of that nature i recommend you get the uh the uh dubro foam rubber which i am actually out of right now but uh to pack around the fuel tank in the fuel tank slot in the airplane so let me get the uh, avastar back up here on the bench and we'll install our fuel tank Okay, now we have our Avastar back on the bench. Um, it's time to put the fuel tank in. Now before we get started, I'll show you what I did. Um, I'll take a length of fuel line and just hook it up onto the fuel tank like this. You'll see why here in just a minute. Um, because we're going to need our fuel lines on there anyway. So we'll go ahead and put them on there. And then you want to come in through the inside the wing bay. Okay, because your fuel tank will not fit through this hole. But it sure makes life easy having that there to uh, get access to your fuel tank and do the work you need. See, like I, if that hatch wasn't there, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now to guide that thing into place. And it just slides right in through the back side, just like that. And then that stopper slides right into that hole, just like that. Okay. Now we have our fuel lines here. And you can't see what I'm going to do next. Hang on. Now our fuel tank's in place, we have to apply our fuel lines. Now what I do, I'll measure off a length and give a little bit of excess, that way you got something to grab a hold of there because that's how we're going to fill it. And just give her a cut right there. Then of course we have our nipple on our exhaust. You always, it's always better to have more than not enough. But there can be too much. And then cut that off just like that. Now all we got to do, put that on the fuel nipple just like that. Put that on the exhaust nipple just like that. Now our fuel system is done. Now we have our fuel hatch that came with the airplane. We're going to go ahead and put that on while we're here. And before we do that, before I get ahead of myself here, there's something else we need to do. We need to put some foam in there. Now these engines 
come with this stuff, okay? Um, it's not foam rubber, but it is foam. It will cushion vibration. Now, I'll just use, I'll use this. I'm, I'm as frugal as frugal can be. Because I may not have $10, $15, or $5 to run down to the hobby shop and get a sheet of foam rubber. But I'll cut it up. And then what I'll do, I'll stuff it. in and around our fuel tank. Just to help cushion some of the vibration. Now the fuel I run is Omega and it actually doesn't foam as bad as the fuels used to back in the day. Now, it used to be like a, like a, a beer when you shook up a beer real bad it would uh, it is that bad. I've always gotten in the habit of putting this foam around these fuel tanks. And it doesn't have to be pretty because nobody's going to see it. But it also helps the fit of the fuel tank too. That ought to be plenty good enough. Now we can put our fuel hatch on. What we'll do, you notice there's four wood blocks here. That's actually to hold the mounting screws for that. So I'll set that there and we'll go back to our handy little hole finder or center finder. And we'll drill these holes out because the screws that we'll be using, what I'm doing, I'm eyeballing where those blocks are. And we'll just drill right through that like that and into the block. Now it is a block of hardwood underneath there, so don't expect it to be easy peasy lemon squeezy. Not too bad, it's not terrible. back about a quarter inch just eyeball here this is one thing I really wish they wouldn't have quit doing on the later generations the gen 3 this is not available and the gen 2 this is not available I still use a gen 3 for flight training I've got a flight school up here that I offer Free flying lessons to anybody that's interested will use my equipment, my fuel. All you got to do is show up with an interest and uh, I'll teach you how to fly. All right, here's that. We'll grab our hardware and the four screws. What a way to spend a Sunday afternoon in the winter, huh? And then we'll just get her screwed down. Be careful not to over tighten because you know you are screwing in the wood, you can strip it out. And like always, what I'll do, I'll just get them started. Make sure I'm in the block. And then we'll go around and tighten everything down good. And sometimes it doesn't hurt to come back and put a drop of CA over the screw holes in the hardwood. That way it makes the threads a little more rigid that you cut in there with your screw. Ah. Hopefully, 
this week we're supposed to have some temperatures above freezing for most of the day and we get rid of most of this snow out there in the plain part of my pasture I refer to the, the area I live they refer to that as the Arctic tundra because the wind just blows and the snow drifts like none other and uh, it can really be a pain in the butt it's really the wind that causes the snow drifts it can snow two inches but if the wind blows I can promise you there will be a two foot drift behind my pickup every morning and I gotta go get the tractor and dig everything out. That's why I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning in the winter. Just in case I gotta dig out. You never know when that's gonna happen. Alright, fuel hatch is secure. Um, we look good. Throttle is operational. We got our fuel lines plumbed. Motors mounted rigid. What we'll do after we get everything installed, we'll put the propeller and the spinner on there. That's kind of one of the last things I'll do but uh, you know it looks like we're ready to set up a radio and uh, receiver and we should be good to go from there well hey I hope you enjoyed this episode of uh, Big Sky Hobby Corner uh, with our engine install and uh, fuel tank assembly and install it was uh, pretty smooth sailing on this one it brought back a lot of old memories uh, back when I was a young and dope one this thing ought to be fun to fly. I'm going to clear the bench and get it all reset and everything so we can do our servo and receiver, battery packs, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, catch us next week.